In this video, I am going to give a brief description about dynamic programming, like what, what is dynamic programming and in what, what circumstances should be used dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is an optimization problem. So if any problem can be solved recursively, but uh, we are solving some problems multiple times, like when we expand our recursion tree some problem might have already been solved so this entire subtree was already solved and but this is reachable from this node as well as this node so if we just use a uh, recursive approach we see that uh, after some level this tree will start growing very rapidly and and it will become exponential like at every step we divide the problem into three steps then at level 1 we have three branches then nine branches then 27 then 81 243 and so it's if uh, depth is k then basically the number of branches is 3 to the power k at kth level so this has so basically leaf nodes represent the solutions then we will have 3 to the power k possibilities and we need to compare each of these so we can solve these by dynamic programming like uh, we have already solved this so when this is visited for the second time we can skip this entire tree similarly for other trees so I will give a brief uh, another example with and then it will be very clear so it has problem should have two properties then only we can apply dynamic programming one is optimal substructure property so what this means is that the optimal solution to a bigger problem can be achieved if we solved a smaller problem like uh, n minus k and maybe some other number n minus 2k suppose this is just a random function so k is greater than 0 so we see that n is some bigger number and this function which depends on n if we calculate n minus k if we find the optimal solution of this n minus k which is smaller than n and also n minus 2k if we know the optimal solution of these smaller problems then we can find the optimal solution of the bigger problem using this so this means the optimal substructure property so for example uh, we have a graph Uh, we have some nodes and we want to go from this node to this node and we want to find the shortest path so there are three ways of reaching this node we can these are connected so this node has So this node is reachable from either node 1, node 2 or node 3. There is no other way to reach this node. So if we if we find what is the shortest path from A to 1 and also path from A to 2 and A to 3 then we will see uh, that whichever is minimum take that because this is just one step so if we can solve this a smaller problem that is a to 1 or a to 2 or a to 3 then we can solve for this also a to b so this is optimal substructure property and second property is overlapping solutions 
so the solutions are overlapping if the solutions are not overlapping then uh, this we can apply dynamic programming but this will not improve the solution because main purpose of dynamic programming is to store the results that we have already calculated and uh, not redo the problem again and again so that is the main optimization that we are doing so if there is no overlap between the sub problems solution of sub problems then we will not gain anything out of this dynamic programming so i can give one example so we know all know about fibonacci numbers so we know that nth fibonacci number is the sum of previous two fibonacci numbers so concrete example can be f 10 is equal to f 9 plus f 8 so if we want to calculate f 10 we need f 9 and we need f8 by the same logic for f9 we will need f8 and f7 and for f8 we will need f7 and f6 then again f7 f6 f6 f5 then f6 f5 f4 f5 and uh, and it will go below till it reaches f0 so it will expand further so you see that uh, first time we calculated f9 so we need this entire tree so for f9 we calculate f8 and here again we will calculate f8 so this entire tree we will calculate again whereas we have calculated this while calculated f9 also so this entire tree we already calculated to get the f8 so there is no point in again calculating this similarly f7 is here f7 is here also here also f6 is here f6 is here so all the sub tree below this f6 or f7 we will be calculating at multiple places so it will really slow down our solution if we just write a recursive function so we have find fib n and if we write if n is less than equal to 1 then return n because fibonacci 0 is 0 1 is 1 then again 1 sum of previous two then sum of these two 2 3 5 8 and so on and else we will return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 return this so this is the recursive solution but it will calculate some many of these values again and again and its time complexity will be exponential like here we have one here we have two nodes here we have four then eight then 16 2 to the power k so this is exponential solution so what we can do 
we know that for calculating Fibonacci, 10th Fibonacci number, we will need all the values. So this 9876543210. So we will need all these values to find the 10th Fibonacci number because this will depend on this and this and this will depend on this and this and so on. So we cannot find 8 and 9 without 7 and 6 and 6 we cannot find without 5 and 4 and so on. So we can start bottom up. So we can have a table of size 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So we know that 5, 0 is 0, 1 is 1 and for 2 we will see just previous two values so it's 1 for 3 we will see these two values again for 4 I will see just two previous values so we just iterated through this list once and we got this 10 instead of doing all these calculations repeatedly so how we can write again the same function and I keep one array of size n and I initialize to 0 and then for i equal to or I less than 10 I plus plus so what we will do so this we will fill so we will fill F I and we will use the previous two values and then we can return F10 or we don't even need this base case check we can initialize F1 is equal to 1 so we have initialized F0 as 0 when F1 is 1 and start looping from here for F2 we will note F0 and F1 which we already have for F3 we will need F1 and F2 which again we have so this will be linear in this case for this Fibonacci number so we have reduced time complexity from exponential to linear so that's why uh, it's used wherever we have a problem which can be solved using some recursive solution but and there will be large number of overla overlaps between the sub problems if there is no overlap we will not gain anything so this is the main idea behind uh, dynamic programming the optimal substructure and overlapping solutions So thanks for watching and give your valuable feedbacks in the comment sections below and don't forget to subscribe my channel if you like it.